He's pretty. He's Gary. Gary's incredible. He gets. He gets the hero badge today. <laughs> I've had this for a while. It is a pin for Lauren Trimble. Paul Harris. Yeah. Oh, cool. I got. I got one to give away today as well, already. I need to keep them separate then. <laughs> but uh, I got it actually after the start of this year, but I think it was sent mm -hmm. long before that. Gotcha. Okay. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Wes. Good to How see you? you. Good to see Good. you. Can I allow to put a couple of these on the table? If you wish. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Give me one second. I got a bunch of stuff to do setting up. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a couple minutes, Lauren. I'm gonna let you know before the meeting starts today. So it, you to, do some emails, do something. There, people haven't been served their dessert yet, so um, it's gonna be a minute. Um, and happy early birthday to you. <laughs> you ringing? You're ringing. Your phone is ringing. Yep. All right. Hi, Rosemary. All right. Hello, everybody. Hey, Julie. How are you? I'm all right. It's nice to hear from you. Jody, we got Jody here. Hey. Hi, Jody. I don't know how many people will see me. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Good, thanks. I have a uh, need for a banker probably coming up soon. Oh, I think I know one for you. Yeah, good. <laughs> and talks to buy my business and it just restarted uh, after covid uh, oh, to talk good. To, not the business but um yeah gotta talk to somebody about getting some photo. yeah i've got some um some really good business partners of mine you know comp you know that work on the business banking side that i can definitely put you in touch with to get into conversation i would, I would appreciate, appreciate that, that very much, much. Thank, thank you yeah just let me know just reach out to me thank, thank you. you appreciate it Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Welcome right. home. Thank you. Wes, were you guys able to eat outside today? We were, we were not, not Rosemary. Rosemary. We, we ended, ended up, up uh, in the atrium downstairs. downstairs. It's, it's not, not perfect, perfect, but it worked. Welcome back, Don. Rosemary's welcome. Rosemary. Thanks. Thank you. What do you think? Can I see a little bit here? Yeah, sure. I just muted you. Okay. You're all set. Why did you mute me? I'll take you guys around here and you can see everyone. Okay. We're doing, we're picking your still downstairs. Okay. Hey. Okay. I care. Okay. I get it. Say hi to the people at home. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I think they got you. Can I give you a pass? Mind open it up? Give people with this when they walk in. Oh, okay. Appreciate it. That's not too bad. How does it work? Uh, hold it down uh, one inch from someone's head. One beep is good. It'll beep twice if it's bad. All right.
Hey, Steve, Julie, everyone who's joining us uh, online. It's probably going to be a couple minutes before we get started. I'm just letting you know, uh, fair warning, everyone's still downstairs. And though I asked them to come up at uh, 1230, uh, it's going to be just probably another couple minutes. Just letting you know. So go ahead and get some tasks done, get some emails out. Uh, I will make sure to let you know when it's starting. I can hear people. A stampede is coming up the stairs now. So maybe this is a good sign. Yeah, no, no, we were in the atrium down there. Yeah. The restaurant's actually open for lunch now. Yeah, it is. Hey guys, take your seats as soon as you can if you don't mind. Absolutely no fraternization or commiseration of any kind shall precede this meeting. Immediately to your seats. <laughs> and you all thought I was bad. Which out. <laughs> Have you gotten anything out of chat books? No, I Almost there, guys. All right. Trying to remember if this is everyone. No, it's not. We still got Rotaract or uh, Interact people downstairs. Satellite club people. I went through the whole thing. Rotaract, Interact, Satellite club. Yes, Satellite club people are downstairs. It'll wait uh, about three more minutes, and then I'm going to get started regardless of who's here. Right, guys? <clears throat> Do you when are you hit it so? So we're going to go mid November. Yeah. That's great. That's all I don't think yeah. so either. It, that's usually what happens is you go for this amount of time, and then the next year it's this amount. <laughs> and as you start to get used to it, the more people that. Uh, You'll love the people talking to him all the time. He's coming back to me going, I don't know. I have friends who call their friends down there. So, well, we're going to be coming down that way. They just run it out and invite themselves in. And they all play golf and, you know. I have never been there, but I have a great place where I used to just like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm surprised they haven't made them do it. Section eight. All right. <laughs> hey, how many people are left downstairs? Couple. No. Okay, I thought you just came from there. Sorry, but. No, I don't think so. We can take your seats, please. We got a lot to do, so we're going to get started if that's okay. I know some people are going to be stragglers coming in late. We will make them feel bad for their lateness when they walk in, obviously. <laughs> So, time is now 12.38, and I am going to call this meeting to order. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you could please rise. Uh, Vince Sanasardi, would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Certainly. I pledge allegiance to the flag 
United States of America, to the Republic, the Pope stands, one nation, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Gene Slinkman, we are so happy to have you with us today. Would you mind please leading us in the four way pack to the things we think, say, and do? I am honored. First, I will have the courage to tell the whole truth. I will be kind in the way I tell it. I will be fair and not seek selfish advantage. I will have an open heart and an open mind. Please be seated. We have a whopper of a meeting scheduled for everyone today. We have uh, Gene and Pat. Uh, and Eileen are here to talk to us about Fishing Well and ACE and how they interact. Uh, Want to remember 9-11 a little bit and talk about that. And we're going to talk about some birthdays that we've got. But I think that we have a number of guests who are with us. But I'm looking around, and I think either some of those guests are downstairs. Oh, they're on their way up, Tom says. Okay, so we'll wait on guests. It has dawned on me as I see that it is Friday, September 11th, and it's the 10th meeting of our Rover year that we are almost... A quarter of the way through this thing. feel like we just got started, but it's incredible. This is going so fast. It is an incredible honor to me to be doing what I'm doing, and I just want to thank you guys and uh, tell you I'm having a lot of fun doing this, and I hope you guys are, are too. Um, it dawns on me also that it's 9-11, and this is also the place in our meeting where I would typically go over some good news stories, and I didn't think that was really appropriate today. And um, In lieu of that, what I, I wanted to do was share with you guys a couple of really good stories uh, about 9-11 and talk about um, what's, what happened that day and how we felt and sort of remember it. It's, it's not lost on me what an honor it is to run a meeting on this day, and I think it's proper for us to, uh, to remember it as such. So um, give me just one second here. Uh, you people online, can you see my screen? No, I don't think they can. There, it is. there we go. All right. Thank you. Sorry, it took just a minute, everyone. So first story, um, on 9-11, there was a fighter, firefighter. His name is Oreo Palmer. Um, and his story really jumped out to me because uh, he single-handedly fixed an elevator that day to get him to go up to the 41st floor of the trade tower. I uh, uh, forget which tower. Uh, he climbed up 37 more flights of stairs after he fixed that elevator and got up to the 41st floor to go to the site where the plane had hit the building. Um, I, it, what, what dawned on me was the courage it must take to have done something like that. He, you know, uh, when, when I encounter a, a stumble in my life, you know, like, like he did, uh, I, I, I don't fix an elevator to go up 41 floors into a burning building. So that one, that one struck me. Um, a second one, one that I thought was wonderful, is a story of when the ground stop happened and, and all the planes were, were down on the ground right the day that 9-11 happened. Uh, jets get scrambled from our National Guard all around uh, the Pentagon and around Washington, D.C. And one F-16 pilot, a female as a matter of fact, Heather Lucky Penny was her name, took off in her F-16 to go patrol and do whatever she was going to have to do. But the incredible part of the story about Heather is that she took off unable to scramble missiles to her jet in time and took off prepared to lose her own life to become a missile on that day to take down any plane. She knew what she was doing when she took off that day and that kind of courage was really incredible to me. Uh, and last was a story I bet most people haven't heard of because this guy was integral to what happened on that day but uh, wasn't anywhere near what happened. His name was Jose Melendez Perez. He was a INS officer at the airport in Orlando. Why is he important? Because the 20th hijacker on 9-11 tried to come in through the port, uh, through the airport in Orlando. He was stopped by this INS agent who didn't know Osama bin Laden, didn't know anything about Al Qaeda, just said, this guy, th this guy is a bad seat, doesn't strike me right. He wouldn't let him in the country. He sent him back to, uh, to where Osama bin Laden was. This guy went with Osama bin Laden. He was captured at Tora Bora. We put two and two together and said, oh my God, this guy must have been, he was denied entry and we caught here, he was what led us to um, getting Osama bin Laden because he, the same guy who got denied when he was captured at Tora Bora, went to Guantanamo and he was the one who gave away al Zawahiri, the guy who gave away, uh, who got us to bin Laden. So this guy, Jose Melendez Perez, and his act of uh, instinct, uh, 
saved a lot of lives. He was destined to be on Flight 93 that day, this hijacker. Flight 93, as you know, is the one that fought back and was down in Pennsylvania. Um, what if there was one other hijacker on, on that plane? Maybe they would have been less able to do it. So um, incredible instinct shown by, by this guy. And why I want to bring all this up today, um, it's the last time I remember that our politics didn't matter, where we were just all for once Americans and all really felt American at the same time. And I think it's because it was the last time, really besides what we're going through right now, where we all went through the same thing at the same time, felt the same pain and the same loss and rallied together. Um, I'm reminded by a, uh, the advice that my friend Roger Smith gave me as I was coming into this uh, position. He said, there's going to be people around you who you're your best friends in this position and they're going to yell at you uh, when you're president. And, and just remember that it's because they're passionate about what goes on here. They're passionate about um, using the analogy, our country, for instance. And I'm going to ask all you guys in the interactions in, in the next couple of weeks and before this election, remember that everyone is playing on the same team here. Whatever you put on Facebook, whatever you say in, in passing, remember that feeling that you had after 9-11 of being all Americans together and uh, live that. Who's got some happy dollars they want to give? So I'm going to start by saying uh, I'm going to give 10 happy dollars. It's really sad dollars. I made a, 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 a announcement last week that we had seven weeks of uh, nice sunny weather and um, our, I, I think I, I called this here. I'm sorry, but it was my fault. So 10 bucks going to go in the, in the top for that. Thanks for that, Jim. We appreciate it. You're welcome. You know you're going to get fined anyway. For I, it, did. So. I did. I <laughs> did. Let's go to Brian Berg and uh, looking to see anyone online, too. I don't see anyone yet, but if you are, just raise your hand and I'll get to you. Go ahead, Brian Berg. What makes you happy? All right. I have five happy dollars. When we were all quarantined back in the day, apparently I quarantined this jacket at the dry cleaners and I, I just got it. This poor thing got unquarantined this past week. I can't believe it still fits. I, I know, I'm not like those. No, 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 I, I'm talking more about myself and good for you. I put on a shirt this morning. It's feeling a little tight uh, around here. It's not good. Uh, let's go ahead, Michael Erickson. I have five happy dollars. Yesterday I took a half day off, played a little golf at the Arlington Heights uh, Club's golf outing and uh, not exactly sure my tee shot hit the pin or not, but I did get close as the pin at less than a foot. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, boy, did you take the putt? Well, I put someone else as a scramble. Oh. I did the hard work. Okay, so we didn't make the putt. Yeah. Bob Fleischer. <laughs> yeah, on my car, I go do that. Okay, so I've got uh, 10 happy dollars, um, and I want to read an email that I received from Jim McCullough about Bonnie. Okay, it's good news finally. So, uh, good news. The doctors and therapists at Marijoin say that Bonnie has progressed so well that it's time for her to go home. So she'll be home sometime tomorrow, Thursday. Controlling pain is still a major issue, and she tires easily. But we'll both be glad for the change. She has really enjoyed all the cards and well wishes, and we've had a few days to get accustomed to our new routines. I'll send another update. Thanks for everything. Thanks for the update. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, Want to reach out to Harley? Please, please do. Go ahead, Matt. I have five happy dollars because of how good it felt as I turned into the parking lot here today for the first meeting in person for me since the 13th of March. We are incredibly happy to have you Hi, I have 10 happy dollars to welcome our Satellite Rotary Club here today. I have five happy dollars echoing what Pat said. This is my first meeting since March. It's wonderful to be here to actually see people and also celebrating that we're able to share with you today about the fishing well and the ACE program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is not happy dollars. I will collect cash uh, throughout the day if you want. All you got to do is just bring it up and put it on the table. Um, I'll, so we're taking cash if you want it. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it, boy. 
Uh, so, I get the uh, camera back. I think we're done with happy dogs, yeah? No one else happy? I'm happy to see Sean Parker here. I'll tell you that for darn sure. Hi, Sean. <laughs> All right, thanks, sir. You're good. All right. So, uh, wanted to bring up what I forgot. Okay. Uh, looks like there was um, Jody. Oh, Jody. Go ahead, Jody. Give me one second. Hey, I have five because it's football season, so it's time for Packers Bears conversations. Sorry, I didn't hear. They muted themselves again. Yeah, we didn't hear anything. Go ahead, Lawrence. Okay. <laughs> well, I have five happy dollars because Eileen recommended to me Glow Yoga, an online yoga channel, which inspired me to join a different uh, yoga channel. I've been doing yoga every day. My back feels like brand new before I had an injury, so I'm really happy that Eileen inspired me to be a healthier version of myself. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Lauren. And Jody, sorry you didn't hear me back there. I was just uh, making fun of the Packers, basically, or something like that. Uh, what I didn't do last week, which I neglected to do, and I am incredibly sorry for, was talk about the birthdays that we have this month. And happy birthday to our three Rotarian birthdays in September that I have noted. Uh, Bob Keller, Lauren Chilvers, and Bruce Dobke. Happy birthday, everyone. Yes, another year on. We see I did all this incredibly hard work to celebrate your birthday. Really tough work. Tom caught me in here 45 minutes early trying to put birthday hats on you guys. It was tough. That's what I'm trying to say. So happy birthday to everyone. Um, thank you for the update on, on Bonnie as well. That was on my list of things to do. We have uh, a bit of club business and announcements, and I'm also going to invite our uh, our satellite club to, to come up and talk to us after I have two things to talk about. Is that cool? Uh, Two, actually, three things. It's getting colder outside. Uh, it's getting a little bit rainy out there. We had to do a little hot route uh, today from outside to inside. And uh, it's not going to be the last time that we have to do something like that. It has dawned on me that as we ate inside today that everything seemed to be going pretty well. And that the people who are with us, who are being socially distanced while we were down there and being safe, uh, might feel just as safe doing that in this room. Uh, bring that upstairs to this room and having our meetings like we've been doing where we have lunch first, lunch ends, more people show up as we're lucky to have, and then we start the meeting again. Is there anybody who would be opposed to it? And I guess maybe I don't want to ask that because I don't want to have to put anyone on the spot. But um, are there any thoughts about that? Does anyone have any feelings? Would you, would you be against moving our lunches upstairs to this room so we cannot worry about the idea of weather anymore? Bob Keller, thank you. And, 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 okay, I see general agreement. Thank you. I'm going to send out an email about this to the group. I'm going to talk to, um, talk to Bob about it, see if that's okay with him. But uh, we have to have some solution for this. It's my feeling that we've been doing this uh, quite safely and with all of your help. Uh, the idea would be lunch here, 1145. Also, we got to have a time that we uh, say if you arrive afterwards, you can't get food because the food just keeps creeping into 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 our uh, meeting time like this. And we need to do well for our speakers that we have to give them all the time. So we may have to institute something like that. But lunch at 1145, meeting up here at 12 in this room. Cool. Thank you. Um, two things. Uh, actually, you know, just one thing. I'm. 1230, right? 1230, what did I say? 12. 12, thank you. Yeah, 1230, sorry guys. So uh, I am lucky to be in the position that uh, Jim McCullough is typically in where I get packages from the Paul Harris Foundation. As all of you know, and some of you who are guests don't know, Paul Harris Foundation is, uh, is Rotary's big foundation and every thousand dollars that you give to the Paul Harris Foundation, you earn a new designation, a new tier of Paul Harris level. This week, I got a Paul Harris pin for a member who has leveled up. Congratulations on being a Paul Harris Fellow Plus Four to my good friend, Brian Berg. Congratulations, Brian. Thank you.
uh, and that's all I have. And if it's all right, I'd like to invite Gabby and our uh, and our uh, satellite club to come up and give us. A, I'm sorry, I, I threw you up there in uh, in time. Is that all right, Gabby? Okay, cool. Uh, please welcome our satellite club cheer. Gabby Vaughn, everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, it's always a pleasure to be with all of you guys today. It's a pleasure to present to you guys a little update about our your your club. Um, and thank you for that. Um, before, as as uh, Wes said, I'm Gabby, the chair of our club. I'm going to introduce to you guys first Laura Donna, who is our chair for our PR committee. Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here with everyone. So again, thank you for giving us this opportunity to be part of your club. And so I just wanted to take a few minutes, um, not a few minutes, like a minute, <laughs> to tell you about who we are and how we are branding ourselves and how we're going to get involved in the community. So we are SHRC, and SHRC stands for Schomburg Kaufman Estates Rotary Club. Um, <laughs> so it has, you know, your name into it, but we just abbreviated it um, to give it kind of like our identity. And like our um, spirit animal, the shark, <laughs> uh, we are uh, s strong and confident leaders in the community. Uh, and no matter what, uh, where we come from, and if we are swimming in calm or stormy waters, um, we, <laughs> uh, we are uh, strong and connected and we, are, we can you know, um, be seen in the community. So, you know, like the shark, um, we, you know, the shark gets like a bad rap for being like an aggressive animal, but it's actually a very peaceful animal. And so like the shark, we are peaceful people that want to just create positive change in the community. <laughs> so we are sharks. <laughs> and um, I'm going to go ahead and give this, you know, back to Gabby so that she can tell us a little bit about what we stand for and what our causes are going to be. So we, um, as you can find on your table, it's a little baggy with uh, just a homemade business card. We still are working on our branding and marketing. Um, and in there, you will also find resources from AFSP. As you guys know, one of our goals for our club is mental health and suicide prevention. Uh, those resources are something that we will be handing out in the community. So let us know if we can provide those for you as well. Um, in connection to that, uh, the first and third Monday, it's going to we're going to be having mental health Mondays, virtual presentations from our club to the community, and it's going to be our first fundraising opportunity so people can chime in virtually and we're going to be able to make those connections for the people that are going through um, any mental illness or just want more um, information on what they can do to take care of themselves mentally. As you guys all know, COVID has hit us really hard and I think it's going to hit us even harder mentally. So. We want to be um, a connection for those in need in the community as well. Um, next up, I'm going to introduce Oscar, who is our church. I mean, Andres, my co-chair, um, who's going to share about when our club is meeting. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Andres Garza. I'm the co-chair. Uh, just to let you guys know, we meet every second and fourth Wednesday. Second Wednesday is mainly for our club. Our fourth Wednesday uh, is a bring a guest day. So we try to bring in new members and let them see what we work on. Uh, so it's been exciting. We've been working on a lot of different projects, so we're, we're happy to be here. So thank you guys for everything. Hi, I'm Oscar. Uh, I'm the treasurer of the club. Um, so I have a project coming up in. I think I can speak. It's virtual. Oh, I have a project coming up in November where uh, we're going to highlight uh, mental uh, men's health, uh, just because we know that men toward a sort of neglect their health and uh, we're putting this together. We don't know exactly uh, which route we're gonna go, but we're just letting you know, we, we got a lot of stuff in the hopper. So um, just wanna keep everyone abreast of that. Uh, and then on a side note, um, some housekeeping, um, we do have some uh, cards of encouragement for uh, shirt cards of encouragement that you know we, uh, we gathered. Uh, we have raffle tickets that we've been selling and we have our dues ready to be paid in full. So. <laughs> Just uh, don't, don't rush to the bank. If you take a little detour, you know, that's fine. <laughs> but 
Hey, that's us. So Congrats. thank you for uh, letting us speak. So um, before I, um, you know, we take a seat, I just want to, you know, say thank you to Pat, to us, uh, to Mike, to Don, who's not here today, and to Julie Clark for being our mentors and for helping us, uh, Jean also, who, oh, uh, she's but Jean, who, who helped us with our new member orientation, and it's just been a fabulous opportunity to work with all of you guys, and Mary Jo, who has also allowed for us to connect with Gigi's Playhouse, where we'll be meeting the fourth Wednesday for our meetings. And, you know, Rotary opens opportunities, and we thank you for the opportunity for our, for our club, and we really, really appreciate all of you. And more than anything, let us know what we can do for you. Yeah, thank you. To better communicate with one another, we do have social media and website. Uh, the website is uh, going to be coming soon. And you can find us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn under the uh, the tag, I am Shirk. So we are proud to say, I am Shirk. So we're yes. Shirks. Thank you, Shirk. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Andres, I like your shoes, man. I'm a Nomad fan, too. Thank oh, thank you. Right, Appreciate it. All right, we have just a few things left, and uh, thank you guys. You've done a wonderful job, and appreciate you selling tickets and everything. So, I am going to invite up our fine, fine, fine master today, Gene Schlankman. Hey, everybody, it's great to be back. Get your wallets out. Um, uh, first of all, Satellite Club, you're doing a fantastic job. I'm blown away by everything that you're doing, your organization, and no offense to any of our past PR people, but you guys rock. Uh, I don't think we've ever done all that stuff, so you guys get a pass today, okay? No fines for you. That's a buck, Mr. Fabrini. You paid your weather fine, thank you. Uh, that's good, so I'm taking that off, but pay a buck. If you're not wearing your pin or you've been late to the meeting, that's a dollar. Um, I recently went out, well, last night, uh, uh, the Rotary Foundation had a, um, a, a webinar for the major donors, and there are several of us in the club that are major donors. Anybody else attend that meeting? A few? Okay, great. Um, and I remember reading in the Rotary Magazine uh, last year, I think, that there are billions of water bottles in the world floating around, floating in the oceans, cogging billions, okay? So it's just a personal goal of mine to not use, you know, water bottles, to have my own water bottle, be, you know, so forth and so on. Um, so if you've used a water bottle, you know, from the store this year, um, that, that's a buck. That's two dollars. Two dollars, okay. You're tallying this up, right? So you can pay it online. Good, okay. Also, um, congratulations, Brian, on being uh, upping your Paul Harris level. Uh, most of us are Paul Harris fellows in the room. I'm not going to find you if you're not, because I'm sure that you're working on that. But if you have not made a contribution outside of your initial Paul Harris or any of the Paul Harris levels, or if you have um, uh, not made one in addition to what we give with our quarterly dues and things, that's $2. The Rotary Foundation, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that in the presentation, is a wonderful thing. Today is 9-11. Wes, thank you for all of those acts of heroism. Um, and if you have never visited the 9-11 um, site, it is so uh, moving and touching and just an enormous um, uh, emotional moment, then that's a $2 fine as well. Okay, now I have a very brief um, little quiz. So it is uh, football season. Jody, thank you for your uh, happy dollars there. And um, I'm glad you're on the line because we're going to talk just a little bit about the Bears and Packers rivalry, okay? The Bears and Packers have played 202 times. The first time they played was 1921, so the rivalry goes back a long time. Now, in that time, I'm going to ask you, um, how many wins the um, Bears have, how many wins the Packers have, okay? The Packers have, yes, a few more wins. How many wins is that, okay? This is the A, B, C, D question, and it's on your honor. Do the, do the Packers have 13 more wins, 10, 6, or 3? Think about it. 
All right. How many think there are 13? All right. How many think there's 10? How many think there's six? How about three? The sixes are right. Yeah. Bears have 95 wins. Packers have 101, and there have been six ties. Did it catch up this year? I think so. So anyway, there you go. That's going to kick us off. They've only met twice in the postseason, and each team has won once. All right, so that ends fun and frolic for today. Thank you, Gene, for getting us through that very quickly and leveling the, the correct fines for the correct amounts. It was wonderful. Go ahead, Alex. I'm sorry, I had an announcement. Yep. Okay, you, you, you thought that you were going to get away with me not talking about the vacation raffle. No, not so lucky. Okay, folks, we only have like a few weeks left. And you guys are killing it. Thank you so much. I'll collect your tickets after the meeting. If you'd like some more, I have some in my bag. Um, and you guys, I'm not going to be here next Friday, so I will get with Gail and somebody will collect the tickets next Friday, or you can always bring them to my house. But we are kind of in the final stretch here. And um, this is what we do it for, is to give it our way to our community partners. And um, please give your, your friends, your neighbors, everyone you know, the opportunity to help us because you are giving them that opportunity. And if you fail to do so, you're cheating them out of the opportunity that they would have to help us. No, it's true. I mean, people, they, you know, I, I found out people were doing this thing. I'm like, wow, nobody talked to me about it. Like, I would love to help. So I know a lot of people feel that way too. So position it that way. It's all outlined on the back of the ticket, all the reasons why they should want to. So thank you. You only have a few more weeks to listen to me. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. I saw Gabby got that in the tagline. I like that. I like your style. Yeah, that's right. Tom, could you uh Tom, could you stop the sharing, please? All right. So our speakers today are are Gene Schlinkman, Pat Cronwald, and Eileen Higginbotham. And this this whole thing, uh, and Bruce, you said Bruce too? Wonderful. Thank you, Bruce. This whole thing started a couple of weeks ago when we had a not so fun discussion around uh, as a club the fishing well, the ACE-1 and ACE-2, and the sources of funding around all of them. And in, in that discussion was born uh, this meeting. What we want to do is learn about it, have you tell us about everything that's involved in it, and uh, hopefully we'll all leave here with a greater understanding of what we're doing as a club today. Ladies and gentlemen, Eileen Higginbotham. Say it again. Yeah. Give me one second to get the screen share up. Oh, we want to start with three for what, screen you want me to video. Sure. So, give me one second. Uh, I need to stop sharing, start share, share for motion and video. Excellent. I can't. Uh, sorry, give me one second. It's okay. It's thinking. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Here we go. All right. Now, here's the Fishing World presentation. And you have a couple of links right here. Up at first. Yes, I will. So this is Catherine. Oh, perfect. Take the second one. Yep. Yeah, you might want to start buying some of that. We'll do. All right, have a listen, everyone. All right, have a listen, everyone. Hi, my name is Cassie, and I am studying diagnostic medical ultrasound. I thank you for my scholarship.
on that, on that, on that. Hopefully you all saw this issue of Rotarian. We will sign autographs if you have yours with you. There are four of us in the picture. We're taking bows. Uh, it was a different type of story than some of us thought it was going to be, but it told the story of the people we're helping, the people we're reaching, and that's what it's about. Oscar finished his first class from the ICU and got an A. I remember that, Oscar. He's the man. How can I start this note? Yeah. Casey, who's about to uh, uh, give a video, I actually introduced her to the so, you brought her in? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, let's start up. I want you to meet a couple of our Fishing Well students, and then we're going to talk about the program. This is what it's all about, folks. Hi, my name is Cassie, and I am studying diagnostic medical ultrasound. I thank you for my scholarship. My first reaction when I received the scholarship was extreme excitement and relief. I hope to meet you at the Realizing Dreams brunch in the spring. Thank you. Hello, my name is Winnie Such. I'm studying radiology and I wanted to thank you for the scholarship. My first reaction when I received the scholarship was happy and surprised. Um, I hope to meet you at the Realizing Dreams brunch this spring. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mark Goldfan and I am a student in the nursing program. I want to say thank you for my scholarship. Um, my first reaction was, wow, uh, this is unreal and this means a lot to me and my family. Um, I hope to meet you guys at the Realizing Dreams brunch in the spring. Again, thank you so much. Today we're going to share with you some highlights of some of the successes of the program and also how it's been managed and how it's been funded. Jean's going to recap the global grants and Pat's also got a uh, recap. I'm not sure what your ACE 2. ACE 2. Okay. Uh, let's start the program then, huh? We'll jump in. And I've got them in the middle of the screen. How do I get that on? But you can just click and drag. Just click and drag. Yeah. All right. I want to thank the commission, and you can see who they are. This is a group of very dedicated people, and Jean just moved off the commission. Uh, there's a difference between commission and advisory committee. The commission are voting members. We are a commission that has managed the development the maintaining, the administration, and overseeing the funding of the fishing well for five years. We have a new member on there this year, Glenn Garlick, and Nanette is relatively new. We've switched and Bruce is now the co-chair and Don has moved into a regular member uh, program. You'll notice our advisory committee, lots of presidents, past presidents, future presidents, and we want those people involved every step of the way. And it's been quite an adventure. We just are starting our fifth year, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. The, um, do I have many of the commission members here? And how come it's not moving forward for me? Glenn is online. Ah, okay. I want you to meet our, some of our students, what, what they're about. They're 24 years and older. They're, light, they're working on programs that are uh, either certifications, licensing, degrees. They're enrolled in, in a career-changing experience. 
they have uh, completed degrees in, uh, I just want to say that right now. Okay. You can see the, the variety, and these are all growth areas. The, uh, the difference that we see, and we're going to share that with you in their earning power when we get these completed, is, is just life changing. Uh, the applied science degrees, those are the longer programs, sort of certificates uh, that have been completed. Some of these are stackable. So you may have a person that starts out with a CNA, which is this uh, certified nursing assistant, and they can build on that and they can go toward nursing and they can go toward higher paying jobs. The average age of our student is around 40 years old. And we've started doing surveys on fishing well, similar to the ACE surveys. And we found that this last year, uh, half of the students that applied had an income of under $18,000. And that's so when you start seeing the numbers that you're seeing on this slide of where they can go by making the kind of commitment that it takes for an adult with a family that's working and going back to school. And Oscar is a good example of that. We've, and we've seen people with two and three jobs going back to school and <clears throat> finding ways to increase their income through, as we say, learn more, earn more. We've had, we've issued over 40, Harper has issued over 41 uh, credentials since we started the program. So in the first four years of the program. And no, some of our students are in, like, like Oscar was three years getting there. Charlie, also known as Carlos, he's in his fifth year to finish, and he will graduate in May, and I think we're all going to be there to cheer <laughs> him on because it's been one and two classes at a time. And so it's been a challenge, but he's getting there, and his, his area of study is in computers. Uh, you can see the changes that the, the salaries represent that our students are studying. It's incredibly significant. Many are going from jobs that are hourly without benefits mm -hmm. or have lost jobs, retooling, and moving on to higher paying jobs. I think one of the keys here is they're changing jobs in many cases for careers. And those careers include benefits. So they're getting insurance, they're getting um, other, other work-related benefits. Some of the uh, higher paying positions, I, they're the high demand jobs too. And that's what we're trying to focus on. We wanna make sure that our students are focused on where the job opportunities are, which as we know right now, seem to be a little bit fluid. Uh, one of the things that we're extremely proud of, and this is one of the things that got Rotary International's attention, as well as uh, from Harper, uh, wanting to share our story and other people is our persistence rate. What that means is the money that we work so hard to raise and we give it to a student, we have almost 90% of that money is being completed. Those certificates are being earned because there's a point at which you can't pull out and get your money back, right? You all know if you, you know, uh, have a college experience. And the national average for the, the student that we work with is under 50%. So we, we choose carefully, and I thank Harper for that because they help vet students that we get the right student coming to us for our uh, grant applications. And I know today we're going to give you a lot of information. We're not going to be able to answer every single question, and if we have questions unanswered afterwards, we will we'll either hang out with you or you can give us a call. But we did send an email out in advance to try to make sure we were covering what was important to you. I think this is an incredible statistic that if you would get a college certi certification uh, or degree from Harper, they're showing that those graduates, their lifetime income is going to be a half a million dollars more than someone without. We also have a community service factor tied in and the, the uh, program has rotary engagement with our mentors. 
I'm happy to say almost everyone that's ever been a mentor is still a mentor. And we have a bunch in this room, raise your hand. I, I know that, we, and, and we've opened it up to spouses. So it's been a great program. I know we've connected with our students. Who was your mentor, Oscar? Do you, did you recall? Pat and Rosemary. Pat and Rosemary, great. Yeah, Rosemary. yeah good. Bruce, I think you're gonna need to come up soon. Bruce is going to talk to you about the funding and the financing component. And then I will come back. The program began as a four year program uh, allocating $25,000 a year for scholarships. And that started in 2016. Uh, it was amended in 2018. We created a uh, extension. Uh, we increased the annual funding uh, beginning in the 2019 year uh, to $35,000 a year. And we extended the length and funding of the program through 2026. Now, the actual results, if we could go to the next slide or, or just do that. Yeah. There we are. Now, this was a real eye opener to me and uh, a shout out to Gary Anderson for helping pull all of these numbers together. $493,611 has been raised and contributed to the fishing well. For those of us who are around for the Alexian project, when we raised a quarter million for the women's and children's uh, uh, hospital, we thought it was a big deal and it was a big deal and it caught a lot of community attention. Fishing well is double that. And uh, to, to put it in perspective, it's important. Uh, disbursements up to this point $192,500, but that includes money that will be used not only this year for the rem remainder of this year, but also into 2021. Uh, we just recently, because of the COVID-19 situation and the fact that so many people are out of work and need to retool, uh, we've added uh, another $25,000 to the scholarships available. And of course, we did check with Harper and make and we made sure that the system could actually process uh, the additional grants. So uh, either up to now or through the end of next year, $192,500 has been spent. Oops, how do I go back? Oh, here we go. Now, the balance of the funds that we have on account in the foundation right now for future funding you know, this is exclusive of anything that we've spent, is just under $300,000. So it's uh, a, a hefty amount of money. And if that provides full coverage of our current $175,000 commitment through 2026, if we keep the uh, annual uh, scholarships at $35,000, we may increase it, we may not. That's up to the commission. Uh, we'll look at it, but we are certainly very conscious of the amount that we have to spend, and we are certainly very committed uh, to running this program through 2026 and thereafter. So I think one more. Unlike some projects where we put money into a not-for-profit that's deserving and doing wonderful things in the community, but some of the money that we put into their general fund inevitably gets used for something other than the core mission. Uh, the fishing well is kind of unique in that way too, and I don't think it gets a lot of publicity. Every single penny of, that has been contributed to the program and transferred over to Harper goes to fund a scholarship. There's nothing that gets in the, in the way of that grant and the actual use of the money as intended. And that is something that just one other of so many things that makes this project so special. And that I think is the end. Thank you. So there you go. Just looking at the upcoming year to share this with you quickly, seeing how, how it works. Uh, we started in March with our interviews. We had $45,000 to work with for the initial interviews this year. Just uh, combining Fishing Well and ACE, there were 811 students that received 
uh, customized uh, emails, we, ta we, have, we target, we, we really try to look for a, a specific student, something that's going to turn around and get them into a career quickly. Uh, we have eight continuing students from last year, and then we have eight new students. So right now we have 16 students that we're going to be having mentors for that are, are, have started school now. And in January, with the additional 25,000, we will have, uh, we, we're hoping that that's gonna give us eight to 10, at least more students, and we will then be looking for more mentors. So it's, it's, a, it's good for us. So this just shows you a little bit how the year plays out with the money that we spent. This, this is the 25,000. Uh, it, it is more work for Harper. Uh, they don't typically do interviews, and Lauren will tell you this. We're one of the only scholarships that does interviews the way we do. And this year we had three uh, great Rotarians helping with that, uh, with the interviews. Glenn Garlick, Lauren, and Nanette were all in the interview process uh, and made recommendations for the students that came through. So as I said, putting more money in means that we've got more students and we will want more mentors, Roger. Uh, I am also excited that uh, this 25,000 came out of the matching money that we've qualified for. And so the money that you see left in there is all part of the matching money, which the commission will work on deciding whether we're going to put more out each year or extend it out. And that'll be probably covered in our next meeting. So uh, I will end it with giving you a quick thank you from April. From April, I'm studying nursing at Harvard College. I'm in my third semester, so I will graduate in May. Thank you so much for the scholarship. It meant so much of a relief to have financial support and continue on my education rather than being financially stressed out and having to pick up more hours at work. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your contribution, and I hope to meet you at the Realizing Branch coming up next year. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Albert Ortiz. I'm studying for HVAD. I uh, just want to say thank you for my scholarship. Uh, my first reaction when I received the scholarship was like, I just couldn't believe it. Uh, I got super excited. Like, it's a big help for me. And I just hope to see you guys at the Realizing Dreams brunch this spring. Uh, as I said, is a dedicated group, and they will continue administering the program and the funding over the course of the next at least 2026. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Give me one second, Jean. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. Exit out of that. This down. Your ace for fishing well, yes? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Here we go. Go here. We're gonna share. Sorry guys, five seconds. Optimize for text and images. Share screen. Gene Schlinklin is gonna go right now. All right, Gene Schlinklin. You can move this around if you wish, but correct left and right. You're good to go. Left and right buttons. Um Thanks, Eileen. So, uh, first off, on your table are some thank you cards, and the thank you cards are from ACE recipients. So, while I'm talking, please uh, take a read at those. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the 
Rotary Foundation and Global Grants. I'm going to tell you the difference between ACE and Fishing Well, how ACE is funded, what its budget is, and some recipient stats. And then Pat's going to take it uh, for a few minutes and talk to you about ACE 2. Okay, so I'm talking about necessarily ACE 1 and generally the ACE program. So with the success of the Fishing Well, and, and by the way, the, um, everybody may know this, may not, the Fishing Well pays full tuition for its recipients, okay? It has the mentors. Um, so the ACE program copies that exactly. And the question was, how can we get more people in Baja, more students and more funds? Where will those funds come from? How can we expand this program? And the answer was the Rotary Foundation through Global Grants. Next slide, please. Still right. uh, so, um, Global, the Rotary Foundation, uh, you know, like our club has a foundation, which is the fundraising arm and invests the money. The same thing, Rotary International has a fundraising arm, and that is TRF, the Rotary Foundation. They do the fundraising, they do the Paul Harris, they do bequests, they do all those kinds of things, estate planning, they do fundraising, they invest that money, and then they have uh, a way to send it out, just like we do with our project selection, and those are global grants. So, most global grants occur outside of the United States in underdeveloped countries for water projects, for, you know, sanitation and so forth. We are one of, as of last year, one of 60 grants, global grants that occur in the United States. So, very few actually take place here. Um, one of the interesting things is, this is the, the Rotary Internet, uh, I'm sorry, Global grants are based on six areas of focus and actually now seven because one was just added this last year and that is the last one supporting the environment. Um, so they don't necessarily support scholarship as we know scholarship for higher education like this. Um, they do support um, basic education and literacy, but not necessarily scholarship. So we had to find something that worked around that so that we could, you know, um, have a global grant um, focused and that is um, economic and community development because we have employers in the area that have a high demand for a skilled workforce. And um, we have a lot of adults who, as Eileen pointed out, have, uh, you know, are underemployed or unemployed altogether. They need career training. And we have Harper College right here, one of the premier colleges uh, in the country that offer over 100 career certificate programs. And boy, what a partner they are. So our, so with economic and community development came the name ACE, Advancing Community Economics. The requirements of a global grant are that first you must do a community set assessment. So I have that community assessment right here. Did that last year. By the way, this whole thing started actually in 2018. So in 2018, got the community assessment done. And all of these documents are on Club Runner. If you're interested in doing that, look on, under Global Grants and you'll see all of these documents there. Um, community assessment is research that supports the fact that yes, there is a need by the employers for a high for a skilled workforce. Um, and we have a lot of uh, uh, people in this community who are um, in need of higher education and career, so forth. Um, the, the application is what all applications are. It's fairly involved with the details. Um, the third thing that a global grant requires is a separate checking account, okay? Completely outside of our club and completely outside of the foundation. Um, this money that, that we get is actually considered the Rotary Foundation money. So it's not necessarily our money, so that's why it doesn't go into our funds. We manage it, we manage how the program is laid out. So that's a big difference. We have memorandums of understanding with our two partners, and that's Harper College and Partners for Our Communities. Um, the Global Grants require an annual report and also a report uh, after the uh, project is completed and the Rotary Foundation had an audit. So last year we were audited, a volunteer Rotarian from Calgary came um, to look over our program. She spent three days with us touring and so forth. Um, and so we passed the audit with glowing colors and, um, and that helped us secure a second um, ACE. 
The differences between ACE and Fishing Well, the funding. Funding comes from the global grant for, for fishing for ACE and from the fishing well, it comes from our foundation and the money that our club and foundation raise. The students for ACE come from the entire Harper College taxing district. That's uh, 27 communities that comprise that. The students um, come from, for fishing well, they come from Schaumburg Township. So there's a big difference right there. Also, uh, the difference is the timeline. So ACE, we have two years of a program that's really three full semesters. So we have to use our money by the end of this year or else we have to give that money back. So there's a definite timeline for the ACE program. In Fishing Well, as you can see by Oscar and Carlos and those guys, you know, they may take a while to get through the program and that's okay. Funding. So Global grants require 30% to come from international sources, international rotary sources, okay? Uh, and then the up to, it can be more than that, but at least 30%. Um, so if you'll notice that in the blue here, we've got um, District 3461, and then all of these seven clubs are from Taiwan. We were very fortunate in 2018 to have a friendship exchange with Taiwan. We hosted them, they came here, some of them stayed in our homes. Um, we took them around to various places in the area, uh, downtown, we did a mini architectural tour. We went out to see Paul Harris's home and his, uh, and his grave site um, and became fast friends. And they also toured Harper College and they were very impressed. Um, so Bill Kelly and a group went to Taiwan. So the friendship was really born. And when, it, when there was a time to do this grant, Bill knocked on their door and said, hey, you know, would you partner with us for this global grant? They said, absolutely. And they came through big time with these funds. We needed just a little bit more money. So this last one is from a Pakistan uh, um, uh, district, $1,000. And um, that was, uh, Bill met, met them at the international uh, convention. The remaining funds uh, come from, I shouldn't say the remaining, more funds come locally. And that is from uh, our district. That's, this should have DDF after it. I'll explain that in the middle minute. Our contribution, our skin in the game is $8,000. I'll explain the 400 in a minute. And then these other clubs also contrib contributed cash, okay? So the Rotary Foundation will match. And and at this time for um, 2018, they matched DDF funds. So that is this $7,000 from the Taiwan district and the $15,000 from district 6440, they matched uh, dollar to dollar. Okay, so we got $22,000 matched there. And then the remaining money was all cash from the clubs. So the Rotary Foundation matches that 50 cents to the dollar. So that came up to $24,000. Total match from TRF was 34, um, plus all of that cash and DDF gave us a total of $80,000, okay? Any questions there? Great. ACE budget, $80,000, it's very simple. We spent $77,000 on tuition, books, and fees for our students that uh, were recipients of the ACE grant. We also have $3,000 that are going to Partners for Our Community. They do a mentor, mentor match program, and they also um, do the surveys. And the surveys are meant to be a measurement tool. We get collect some um, uh, data up front as they begin their um, studies. You know, what's their household income? What do the demographics look like? What kind of jobs have they had in the past? Uh, benefits um, and what their goals are. So we use that so that we can follow the recipients after they graduate and collect similar information and see how well the grant's doing. So here's some stats. Um, the timeline for our students started in January 2019 and they'll com be completed in December 2020. So that's like three major semesters plus a little bit of uh, two summers in there. We've had 350 applicants and all of those applicants were looked by Lauren Childers. So Lauren is a huge, huge part of this. 
um, and um, you know she she's wonderful. She looked at all of those applicants. Uh, we did 32 interviews in three rounds uh, based on the major semesters. We have had 26 recipients, and that's all we'll have because our last five just started this semester. Uh, to date, we've got 13 graduates, and the other graduates will graduate in December of this year. And then here's a, just kind of a summary of the types of careers certificates that they will be receiving. Any questions? Sure. Yes, Holly. So, the, so this was the first eight grant. This is the first eight grant. Jim, can you repeat the question the for people? Like oh, the question is, well, I haven't had a question yet. This is the first eight grant. I'm just clarifying. Yeah. So, so this is how, like, you get the grant, you spend the money, it's, it's gone. Like, it's like, Boom. like yep. one big goal. All right, thank you. Yep. So the question comment is you spend, you get the grant, you spend the money, it's done. Absolutely. So in the so this summer we said, well, how can we continue this program? And we've been in contact with uh, the Rotary Foundation. We have a regional grant officer that does is responsible for us and a whole bunch of others. Um, and they liked the program. You know, they the audit went very well. So yes, yeah, so sure, submit another grant and we'll see how that goes. So we did. We got the grant, and Pat's going to tell you a little bit about that just to wrap up. Okay. And what you can't see on this slide is at the top of that blue space, it says ACE to approve. <laughs> And just mirroring some of what you heard about ACE-1, um, this is the funding for ACE-2. Instead of, of the $80,000 that the first program was, we're looking at $160,000. Um, and it doesn't take a mathematician to see that this is double the first project. Our 30% of international funding comes from the clubs that appear in the blue box. And I've got to tell you that they were Johnny on the spot. You'll see in the timeline, it only took them three days to get their money turned in once it was approved. Um, the cash from the, the local clubs in the project area are in, is all in the yellow box. We are the most significant donor at just over $25,000. Um, we have made one payment toward that $25,000 and we're working on getting the rest of it into the foundation this month, uh, along with a couple of clubs that have in 6440 that have not yet submitted their entire funding. And we're working on that. I've been busy on my email all week, making sure we get that moved forward. Um, oops, the TRF match. All of this work gets us a grant of $66,313. The strange number being what was matchable by our donations. This is what that $160,000 is going to fund. The great majority of it will be the tuition, the books, other direct educational fees. Um, for instance, uh, students that have um, internships or um, site uh, needs, particularly in the medical fields, will receive some funding to support um, the scrubs they need to buy and so forth. That's, that's part of the fees involved in doing those um, practicals. Um, we do spend something through Partners for Our Communities to take care of our mentor match, but the large portion of that 
is for the surveys we do with students as they begin partway through and a, a year after they're done. Uh, so that we can document the impact of what these scholarships are doing for the recipients. And that's a really important part of this as we learn the effectiveness of this kind of a program. And then there's a tiny little bit for meetings and promotions. Um, for instance, when we go out to clubs, if we need to print something to hand out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a, base, a very basic timeline for ACE2. The application with great kudos to June, Jean, who worked absolutely tirelessly and with great dedication and lots of prodding to all of us, got the application in in June. One of the reasons that that was important is if it wasn't submitted in June, the matching from the foundation would have changed. We would be getting less money or would have had to put in more money. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Jean. <laughs> After some backing and forthing with our, our regional representative at the foundation, the application was approved by the foundation and we received notification on the 21st of August. On the 26th of August, we received notification that all of the Taiwanese funding was submitted. Uh, that's an efficiency we'll never match here. Um, we're following up right now on getting the District 6440 funds all in. We are really hoping to get the first payment to Harper in very early October because Harper very wisely does not start promoting scholarships until they have the money to fund those scholarships. I mean, you can imagine how awful it would be to get a group of people excited about a scholarship that never happens. Um, and we're looking at um, January of 21 for our first class of scholars. So it will be pretty seamless. ACE 1 will finish up at the end of 20, and we begin on the 1st of January, 21. Uh, we will have a mid-grant review. What we're asking, and the foundation has agreed, is that the initial payment will be approximately 70% of the entire grant, which means that we will get our scholars into the pipeline early in the three-year period. ACE-2 is a three-year grant, not a two-year grant. But in order to be sure that we do expend the full amount at the end of that three years without a scramble, um, we're going to start the interview process and have as many qualified students involved as early as possible in that three years, which then gives them a little breathing room for completing their certificate program. And uh, however it plays out, the completion of the program will be not later than the end of December 2023. Um, funding is exactly the same as we talked about for, for ACE-1 in terms of um, expenditures, et cetera, et cetera. So questions on any of what you've heard. Vince. Do the students that are in ACE 1 and ACE 2, they need to complete their education in the same time frame as ACE is available? Yes. Can you repeat the question? Uh, Vince asked, are those who are in ACE 1 and ACE 2 required to complete their degree programs or certificate programs within the time for the grant? And the answer is yes, they do. Yes, um, Holly. Um, how much is a typical tuition at Harvard? Depends on the program. And Lauren, you can probably answer that better than I can. Can you repeat the question? 
She's asking to repeat the question. The, 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 My initial answer was, it depends on the program. So, you know what, the meeting got muted. So the question was, how long does it take for students to complete? How much is the typical grant amount or typical uh, tuition for a semester? Yeah, it depends on the program. So like nursing, any health career is gonna be double tuition. Um, and then they'll have different fees with books and things like that. So those are the more expensive programs where you'll get like HVAC, they can take one, two classes and get a certificate. So it does vary greatly um, by the student. We did see with ACE a lot of the shorter certificates come in. So we um, were seeing uh, less amounts with um, the ACE grant. Can you give us just a guess at what it might be? Well, it, I mean, it varies from 500 for one student to 2,200 to another student. Again, Holly, that depends on what program they're in and how long it takes them to complete it. So it's, it's just that, you know, they, if you're, if you're in a uh, course that's, uh, you know, uh, eight eight credit units like phlebotomy, you can get it done in one semester. That's going to be maybe out of twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars. But if you're an HVAC, you know that's going to be four semesters of all you know sixty credit hours. So that might be I don't know you know twelve. I don't, I'm just guessing at the numbers twelve thousand dollars or something like that. And nursing is double. Yeah, Oscar. Oscar's going to answer. So you say so you graduated with a what degree? Forensic science. Yeah. Seventy five hundred for your two certificates. Great. Great. Seventy five hundred. First, I will go to um, uh, Sean Parker. The question is, is the student profile significantly different between ACE and fishing well? And I think Jean is going to step in and say something to that. Yeah, thanks. So real quickly, the, the, the answer to your question is no, it's the same. You have to be 24 years and older. You need to live in the Harper district and you need to show a need. And we like to get a letter of recommendation, which POC is very helpful in or one of our social service agencies or teachers that are at Harper already that have a, a student who needs one more semester to graduate or a few classes, they write a recommendation letter and, um, and we often fund that person. And I saw that Mary Jo had a question. No, we have not. And that that's because of the funding situation that will begin as soon as we are able to get the payment from the foundation. Eileen. I just wanted to say, Sean, you gave us a challenge. You gave us the matching money and you said, go find more money. So Sean gave us about $100,000 and we went and found $245,000. Thank you for that. <laughs> And for those of you at home, um, Eileen made the comment about Sean's matching challenge to us to find $100,000. And we found 240, and Sean agrees that we did meet the challenge. Good job, everyone. Thank you, Pat. Thank you to Pat, to Eileen, to 
to uh, Gene, to Bruce. Thank you guys. I feel like I'm walking out of here with a lot more knowledge. I learned so much about this. Uh, I appreciate it. So thank you guys for that. If we can all rise, please. And thank you to all those who stayed with us online. We know this is a particularly long meeting today, so thank you for that. Uh, I am going to go to Jack Lucas. Jack, would you mind please uh, lead us in the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do? Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you, everyone. Uh, this week, please remember to let your actions show that Rotary opens opportunities. Have a good week, everyone. <laughs>